Oh man, I swear it never fails. I just traveled like a thousand blocks away from home looking for new biomes, but I just remembered, pretty sure I left the stove on back at home. Darn it, and now I'm worried about that. Well, fortunately, I have the magic mirror on me, and so I can simply gaze into the magic mirror in order to be teleported home, and yep, look at that, sure enough. Left the stove on, just like I thought, so let's go ahead and turn that off. That would be a shame if I burned my house down while I was here. And, oh, where was I again? Well, fortunately, I have this button that'll take me right back to where I was. Oh, yeah, that's right, I just found this place. And it looks like it might be one of these crazy new Mega Taiga Hills or whatever they're called. Yeah, with Podzol and Moss Stone. That's pretty cool. Can dig up some of this Moss Stone if I want. Actually, when I was just home, did you guys notice Did I leave the front door open? I think I did. Let's go ahead and gaze into the magic mirror once again. Yup, sure enough, I left the front door wide open. I seem to be a real scatterbrain today. I don't know what's up with that. All right, well, let's get back to what was I doing? That's right, I was mining that moss stone, and so let's get right back to it. So, as you can see, I've kind of invented something that's like a magic mirror or a portal gun, basically that allows you to teleport back to your spawn house and then back to wherever you were anywhere in the world. And just to kind of demonstrate that, let's go ahead and I'm gonna teleport myself just to some other random spot in the world over here at 2000, 2000, so now we're in the middle of a birch forest. And once again, I could always gauge, gaze into the magic mirror. It'll take me back to my spawn house, which is great. I can do whatever I want to do. I can drop off some inventory or whatnot. And then I can press the button and it brings me back to wherever I was. And in this case, it's the birch forest. And a nice thing about this is, while of course it is using command blocks in the background, it doesn't really interfere with survival features. So for example, if I were to sleep in a bed uh, right here and set my spawn point to right here, it doesn't even interfere with the spawn point. And so just to demonstrate that, let's go back over here somewhere, somewhere else in the world. And once again, from over here now, if I gaze into the magic mirror in order to teleport home, and then come back here, even after using that teleportation thing to get to different places in the world, if I were to kill myself now, I still respawn in the birch forest where my spawn point was set. And so all of this works without ever changing the player's spawn point. So let's talk about how this works. It's actually surprisingly simple. It's actually just these seven command blocks. These three are the magic mirror that can take me home. And these four are the button I can press to go back to my previous coordinates. But let me first familiarize you with this world. I am currently near spawn, near zero, zero. And so I've got some stone pillars here. Stone starts with an S and so stone is like spawn. And then if I go a thousand blocks out over to some other location, I've got some red pillars here to denote a remote location. And something else that will be useful, I've got some hopper clocks set up and they just go into this command block and it's going to say remote is loaded anytime this hopper clock is running, which is anytime these chunks around here are loaded. And similarly, I can teleport back to the spawn area. You'll note that remote is loaded is no longer appearing on the screen. And that is because I've teleported back into these chunks. Nobody is way out there. And so the game has unloaded those chunks. I'm also going to set up a similar clock here at the spawn chunks that say that spawn is loaded. But I want you to notice that if I teleport back out to the remote chunks, it says remote is loaded and spawn is loaded. And that's because the remote chunks are loaded because I'm a player and I'm standing here and you always have chunks loaded around the player. The spawn chunks are loaded because they're actually spawn chunks. Spawn chunks are special chunks that always stay loaded in Minecraft world. And that's gonna be important in a moment. I'm back here at spawn. Let's talk through a naive approach that seems like it would almost work, but doesn't quite. Suppose the player is somewhere out in the world and we want to remember where the player is located. We could spawn an animal, such as a pig, at the player's location, give the animal a custom name, say Piggy, then teleport the player back to spawn, let the player do whatever he wants to do at his spawn house, and then when he press presses the button, we can teleport a player back to an entity, and so we could teleport him back to the Piggy. And so that would work, except if the pig 
If the player was originally starting somewhere out in the remote wilderness outside of spawn chunks, those chunks would no longer be loaded once the player gets teleported back here. And if you try to teleport to an entity that's in unloaded chunks, the teleport fails. So I'm going to show off a way to keep the remote chunks loaded, but first I'm also going to point out that rather than using a pig, we should use a wolf, because wolves have some advantages. And so this command here will summon a wolf at the player's location, whose owner is Notch and whose custom name is Wolfie. And when you give a wolf an owner, basically when you summon that wolf, the wolf will already be tamed and seated. And a seated wolf has an advantage over a number of other mobs in that he's going to stay put. He's not going to move anywhere. Another advantage that wolves have are that wolves don't have any drops, which means when you kill a wolf, nothing is going to appear. If you kill a pig, he'll drop some pork chops, but if you kill a wolf, there'll be nothing. And as a result, we'll be able to clean up afterwards and get rid of the wolf without anyone ever being the wiser. There'll be no evidence that the wolf was ever here. So then, the plan is we will summon a wolf at the player's location, we'll teleport the player back to spawn, let the player do whatever he wants to do at his spawn house, and then when the player pushes a button, we'll teleport him back to the named wolf. And so, the only problem is, how do we keep the chunks loaded where the wolf is? And the answer is, we're going to move the world spawn itself. And so, before we teleport the player, we're going to set the world spawn to the player's location. As a result, those remote chunks will become the spawn chunks, and therefore always stay loaded at the same moment that we are teleporting the player back here, and with the player here, that'll keep the player loaded. Then, we'll be able to teleport back. If that's all we did, then we'd run into a new problem, which is, after we teleport the player back to the remote location, the player and the spawn chunks would both be set to that remote location, which means there's nothing to keep this section from being unloaded. And as a result, we wouldn't be able to run the magic mirror once again in the future, or do some other cleanup tasks that I'd like to do. And so, in order to fix that, when the player presses the button to get teleported back to the wolf, we are also going to set the world spawn back to zero, zero. That is, move the spawn chunks back here. So at the same moment we teleport the player back to the remote location, we set the spawn chunks back to this location so that this area will stay loaded, and meanwhile the player's area will stay loaded because the area around the player is always loaded. Finally, there's a couple other things we need to do. This command here teleports the wolf high into the sky up to a Y of 255, and then this command here kills the wolf because he was just a temporary placeholder. And the reason I'm teleporting him into the sky is so that we don't have to hear the wolf die the moment that we teleport back, because otherwise he'd be standing in the same block and we'd hear his howl. Let me run the system once from very nearby, just so you can see how the system works. So for example, if I'm standing here, I could activate the magic mirror, which will teleport me to this location, and summon a wolf where I used to be standing, I can go ahead and break this redstone block. I can do whatever I want to do at spawn, and then when I want to be teleported back, I can press this button, and I get teleported back to where we started. The wolf gets teleported up into the sky and gets killed. And so now let's demonstrate this from a remote location. And so if I go over here, we see remote is loaded and spawn is loaded. I'm going to stand on the command block just so we can see exactly where we're standing. And this time I'm going to place that redstone block and I'll do it remotely via command to activate the magic mirror. And you can see I get teleported back to spawn. Here is the redstone block that I just placed with the set block command. We can do whatever it is we want to do at spawn. And we can see that remote is still loaded because currently the remote area is spawn chunks. And then once I'm done and I want to teleport back, I can just hit the button. I teleport back exactly to where I was here standing on the command block. And we're done, and spawn is still loaded because we set it back to being spawn chunks. I'm going to run the demonstration one more time, but this time I'm going to get rid of the command block that teleported the wolf high into the sky. But once again, spawn, the spawn area near 0, zero is currently spawn chunks. The player is out in the remote wilderness out here. And so the remote chunks are loaded because the player is standing here. The spawn chunks are loaded because they're spawn chunks. I'm going to activate the magic mirror. The player gets teleported to this location, 
and spawn chunks get swapped back over to the remote location. So the remote location stays loaded because they're now the new spawn chunks. This location stays loaded because the player is here. And now when I'm done, I can press the button to go back and this time listen. <laughs> we just heard the wolf die at my current location. And so that's the reason I teleported him into the sky. Because I didn't want to hear that noise every time I teleported back. In the original demonstration, I added some embellishments such as selecting the magic mirror as a way to activate the original redstone, as well as the Enderman sounds and portal particles that you can see when you teleport. But those are just kind of cheap parlor tricks that you could do with command blocks. They're non-essential to the core portion of this particular invention, and so I'm not going to show them off here. There is some information in the description of this video to find out more about those details, but the essential command blocks are all in the description of this video, so you can read that and check them out. I'd like to call out some prior art, some similar work in this particular field. I saw a video by Wubby Concepts that allows you to save any number of different locations out in the world. It's very complicated in terms of the way that it uses command blocks, but also very ingenious. And so if you want to see something very clever, you could check out that video. I'd also like to give a shout out thank you to all the people on the Minecraft Inventions subreddit who helped me brainstorm ideas in order to get this particular invention working. My name is Dr. Brian Lorgan 111 and in addition to this video, I've got some other command block inventions, as well as command block redstone and scoreboard tutorials. There'll be a playlist linked in the description of this video, and so if you'd like to check out some other videos, you could check those out. I hope that you guys like this video, and you can always subscribe for more content if you like. As always, I hope that you're having a great day. See you again soon. Bye-bye.